Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to make myself some new dye storage, and I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, I've been thinking about doing this for a long time, but I never got around to doing it. And here's what my thinking is. I have this Stampin' Up! It used to be um, for wooden stamps. It, it's, let me give you the measurements. About five and an eighth inch, no, maybe five and a quarter inch wide. Seven and a quarter inch tall and deep. It's a little bit over an inch and a quarter. So I've had these boxes for a long time because, you know, those Stampin' Up! boxes, most people don't get the ones with the wooden stamps anymore. But I have some of these and I wanted to use something else that I bought. They no longer sell these, but I'm going to show you alternatives to everything I have here. And that is, Tim Holtz made these ideology, they're, um, basically they turn something into a three ring binder, two ring binder, I guess. And it comes with, um, brads to attach it in. It's, you get two of them and it's great. The other thing you're going to need are magnetic vent covers. These are used for over your, um, heat that comes out of your furnace. If you have one of these on the floor, people use these to put over that, I guess, so that no air comes out of it. Don't understand why you would do that, but that's what they're used for. And you can buy them at any hardware store. So I bought these. They come in strips that are like that. So what I did was I cut mine to seven inches tall, which gives me an inch. I had to cut off the bottom of each one and then five inches wide each one because I want to make sure it fits in my in my um, box. Then I cut pieces of um, Recollections, that's Michael's brand, heavy duty cardstock that I'm going to put in between my, I'm going to put two sheets on either side or one sheet on either side of it because this is kind of flimsy and if I'm trying to you know, flip through this book, I'm not going to want to have to deal with flimsy. So I thought, figured if I put that in there, that would be a good solution. Now, let me tell you the alternatives. I still would recommend you buying the vent covers because I think that they are a good way to use, well, to hold your dies. Then the other solution, you can buy these at garage sales or at um, thrift stores. And what it is, it's a kid's uh, binder and it has a zipper. Oh, it's really heavy because I have stamps in it. It has a zipper all the way around. You could do this instead. And the, the um, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Yeah. The the binder, the three ring part is already in there. All you would need to do if you're going to be using this instead is you would want to measure the height of this and you'd want to put these in at that height. So let me tell you how high you'd want these to be. Well, it'd be the same size as these um, things that hold my stamps. So it looks like it's 11 inches high and you would leave the full width of your um, of your vent cover. I was trying to think of a different word for it, but it's magnetic and you'd want the full length of it and then you'd want it to be 11 inches tall and then you're gonna cut off the excess. And what I'm gonna do with my excess is I'm gonna lay my strips together in a line and make another sheet out of those because I'm not gonna waste those, why would you? So hopefully that made sense, that that's an easy alternative for what I'm doing. And the reason you want the zip around it is because sometimes your dies will come off of that magnetic sheet. You know, you think the magnetic sheet's going to hold it, but sometimes you lay it in there wrong or you lay it in upside down, whatever, and it doesn't stay. So you have to 
uh, make sure that it you don't lose them and that's how you're going to make sure you don't lose them so let me tell you how i'm going to do this rich already poked the holes in this for my um my brads i don't know what tool he used to do that but he did a great job and i'm going to try to take my brads back out because I want to put a strip of cardstock in there. I cut my cardstock. I want to have it look pretty because why wouldn't you have it look pretty? I'll give you my measurements on this too because in case you have these boxes. And a lot of us do have these boxes. We got them, you know, years ago and we kept them. Okay. So these have at the top a little opening under a piece of, of acetate or plastic of some kind. I don't know if it's really called acetate. But I'm just going to shove this down in here so that it's, you know, the whole, it looks good. Then I'm going to take a pokey tool and where Rich made his holes, I'm going to make a new hole because I want to be able to, hold on, I want to make sure you can see this. I'm just jabbing holes in here so that, so that my um, brad will be able to just easily go through that and not fight me. Because you know, sometimes things fight me. That will hold my paper in place. I will never have to worry about my paper moving again. It'll be lovely. You can, instead of using these, you could use those little, um, pull them out. They look like this. You could use those instead, and uh, you could put those in and um, just have them loose in here so that the whole, the whole um, section will come out. The box will hold it until you need to pull it out. I don't know how else to explain that. So how we're going to attach everything is you're going to take, if you have these, you can find these kind of things on in like staples that are um, made to create three ring binders. So you, if you look there, if, if you can't find the ones from Tim Holtz, which I don't know if you'll be able to, you could look at maybe staples and see if you can find them there. I'm trying to line it up with my hole. I put a piece of cardstock in already, and I'll give you the measurements of that. I might have to put another um, set of cardstock in there to hide my um, enders of my breads. So you can see now I have my um, two brads pushed through, and on this side, the brads are the ends of the brads are sticking out so what I'm gonna have to probably do is add another piece of cardstock on top if I want it to still be pretty and of course you know I do because um, that's how I roll I didn't have another way to do this when you're it, the brads would have to have gone the ends of the brads would have to have been underneath this piece of plastic there's a piece of plastic that goes the whole length of your front and back of your um, box. I think it's cool how St Stampin' Up! did that, but when you're doing what I'm doing, I think I need to put in another piece of paper there. So then I made a front and a back, and let me tell you the measurements of these. This is five inches wide by seven and an eighth inch tall, and I'll just slide that in here into the front or back or whatever it is. I can't decide if it's the front or the back. And then I'm going to do the same back. Oh, yeah, there it is. I was going to say, maybe it doesn't have a piece in the back, but I thought it did. It did. And I'm just going to slide that in. And so that's what our box is going to look like. Then let's go on to creating our pages. Now, when you do this, you're going to have to have a hole punch that's a decent size hole punch. I'm using this one that I got because it's got a big hole Hopefully you can see how big that hole is. Well, if you can't, you'll see it in a minute. Then the other thing you want to do is you're going to take your your pieces again. 
These are seven inches tall by five inches wide. I'm going to just lay this in there. I'm going to kind of center it so the top and the bottom are the same um, width from the distance from the top and the bottom of the box. And then I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to put a mark. What I did was I laid my my um, magnets in here and I made a mark. I'll just take this piece out because it'll it'll fight the other piece. I want to show you how I do this so that you have a, a good idea. What you're going to want to do is you're going to put this your first piece. You're going to want to center it from top to bottom so that it's got a little bit on either end. And then what I did is I just made a mark like that would be directly back from this piece. And then I took my big, as I said before, you need a big uh, circle cutter. Corner, I don't know, circle something. Anyway, you're going to put it in upside down and you're going to either you can go from your line straight back or like I did, I made that little hole, that little circle. You want to make sure you get that lined up pretty close. Then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to line it up with your, I'm going to, I accidentally took the backing off this side, the, the backing of the tear tape. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this without having a big catastrophe on my hands. I think I'm just going to punch my holes on this piece and then I'll lay them down. Same thing, I made the mark and now I'm just gonna line them up, punch out the hole. It, it isn't hard to punch these holes out of this magnetic sheet, it's not very thick. You want to have the black or brownish side face up on your paper, your cardstock. And I laid four strips, I don't know if you can see that, I laid four strips of my um, uh, tear tape on that so I would be sure to have hopefully that's close enough so that I'd be sure to have enough to hold this piece of um, magnetic sheet on there then now that can you see that you see the the gray through there from the paper that's underneath you're just going to take it again it's a little bit harder to punch this out but you want to punch through that layer Then I'm going to take my backing off this side and then we'll be able to put our other sheet on that already has the holes punched in it. The point of this is not to store all of my dies. This is only going to be storage for the dies that I use all the time. And um, I find that I have certain dies, especially sentiments, that I use a lot. And I want to have those at my fingertips. And that's why I'm doing this, is so that I have some kind of storage system where I can get access to this easily. If you have a little bit hanging over the edge, either trim it off with your scissors or, in my case, I don't know why, Okay, here's the other thing. I used my um, um, guillotine. that out. I used my guillotine paper trimmer, and when you use this, sometimes you go on an angle. Can you see this? That is the the underside. It's not straight because when I push down on it with my guillotine, it went on an angle. Even though you try really hard not to have that happen, sometimes it happens like this where you get a little bit of an angle. So when that happens, all you need to do is do what I just did and trim it off. And the thing I like about it is that they fit in there really nice and it's sturdy. It's not a, um, a chintzy piece. Okay, let me show you the other thing I did. I put tear tape I'm going to put this in now so you can see this. I put tear tape on the back of these strips. Now these are the ones that I had left over because our my um, my vent covers are six inches wide versus five inches wide. So I couldn't figure out a way to use that. 
so, uh, other than doing this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with my edge of my paper that I have in there. And I'm going to hopefully see if I can lay it in there straight. And it's too long, so I need to move it or cut it down a little bit. Maybe I'll just cut a little snip off of it or move it in. Let me see, see if I can move it over more. Yeah, I think it'll move over. You don't want to have it go past the little, uh, there's like a little divot right there. I'm going to put my next, I'm going to just put a few in. I'll have Rich speed this up so you don't have to spend 20 minutes watching me lay these in here. So I can put some there and I can fill this whole sheet and then I have these two pages. Well, there's four pages of these and I'm going to finish the other pages. I have enough for two more pages done and then what I'll do is I'll come back and show you what I've done and like the what dies I've put in here. These are the ones that I use the most. The first page is my happy birthday and um, the big happy birthday and then this is one that has the layer around it. Well after I played with this I tried to close it and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong but it's just it, it just doesn't want to close so I put in fewer things and still it doesn't want to close. Then I moved uh, the uh, pieces that were near the um, rings and it still didn't want to close so I guess what I'm going to tell you to do is, if you want it to close, you're going to have to use those rings that are loose, like these, and just um, not attach it. I'll show you what I mean. You're going to want to do two of the rings. I have another one, but I'm not going to get it right now. You're going to take this out. Then you're going to take your ring like this and open it up. That's always the tricky part for me. And then you're just going to put them through here. I'm going to add a couple more and see if it'll work. Ones that had letters on them. I was trying to find the ones that had words, but I guess I have all the ones that have words already in here. So I'll just, I'll just attach another one like this and then we'll just set it in like that. And that will work because this little ring will lay down my um, sprung, my uh, little things. Are, there we go. So that worked. So luckily, um, you won't waste your money on those other, um, the Tim Holtz things. Just buy a couple of these. They have those at the Dollar Tree. Let me tell you how big this size is. If you do have these boxes. I gave you the, the dimensions of the box. Now let me give you the dimension of the ring. Closed and going across the center of it, it is about an inch and a quarter. I'm going to put it up there on the screen so you can see it. There, there it is. See in the center there, it's about an inch and a quarter. So that's the biggest you'd want to get. You might want to even look at an inch because I think you'd have better luck if you had a little smaller one because you wouldn't have to tilt it in the in the uh, box if it was smaller. I'm bummed that my other system didn't work because I really wanted it to be the way you know the way I planned it, but um, it didn't. But it looks cute. I'm happy it's done. It. Um, I'm going to put all these in once 
that were off camera, but I thought it was fun. I hope you did too, that it gave you some ideas of how you can store your dies in a little different way. And I thought the thing that would be nice about doing this is I can put it right beside my die cutting machine. And then when I want my the sentiments I always use, I can just open it up and go right to those. So I hope you enjoyed this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.